and the bells go out <laughs> as we start, we start listen. We had a slight problem with the iPhone, which we started our cast. So we're going to give him a shot. For those of you who have been watching, uh, who have been waiting, we're going to restart again. Hi, everybody from Casa Kesi. I am Nadine Beltran. Betty, Betty Kesi. Kesi. Today we are in the belly of the wonderful city of Bologna, launching our new live streaming series called Casa City Belly. Casa Chiesi City Belly. Now the idea is to show our viewers from around the world the cities that we love the most from the very heart, which is always the main square, which is where we're located at right now. As everybody knows, most of the medieval uh, town and uh, in Italy are concentric by nature. And uh, the main highlights of the city, most of the time, are around the main square. That's why we call it the belly. Exactly. So we are in the main square of Bologna, that is called Piazza Maggiore. Piazza Maggiore, as the Bolognese call it, uh, Piazza Grande. And you will see that most of the beautiful palaces built in this town are around the square. Now. Uh, since we are in Bologna and we would like to, in the series, we would like to mention some important facts of Bologna. Yeah. So. Apart from the, the one you, I will show you in the square. I love the bells. <laughs> the bells of the belly. Okay. Now, the, well, what region is Bologna located? Emilia Romagna. Okay. Population roughly? It's around uh, 500,000 people, which is not a lot. It's a small town. Okay, and uh, the weather, the typical weather conditions of Bologna? It's typically continental, which means very cold in winter time and very hot in the summertime. Okay, now, and it, Bologna is famous for? Uh, Bologna is famous for several things. For sure, the food, the university that we will talk about later, and the fact that it has been run by the left wing for a long time. Okay, now, what do Italians typically think about Bologna? We think that it is a place of well-being, and there is a good reason to think that. Now, what is the typical dish characteristics of a uh, uh, typical Italian dish that is favored of Bologna? Well, the, the food in general is very good and all over Milano, Romagna, but the typical dishes in Bologna are for sure ragù, la bolognese, that everybody knows about. It. E i tortellini in brodo, which is stuffed pasta, very small, in uh, uh, meat broth. Okay, now, the typical wine that the Italians love to drink is the Bolognese love to drink. Sangiovese, Sangiovese di Romagna, <laughs> red wine. Now, another thing that's important in our facts figures that we like to understand is the friendliness of the people from the cities that we will be visiting. Bologna, from one, from one to ten, how do you rate it? That's a very high on the scale. <laughs> so it's a very high scale that we were looking at roughly... I would, I would say ten out of ten. Yeah, we started thinking about eight, but in the last couple of days that we've been here, the two days we've been here, people have been super friendly, so we brought it up to uh, a ten, I would yeah, say. Yeah, an extremely nice place to visit, okay. if you have the chance. Uh, I, I just, we just wanted to give you some information about uh, this area before we proceed in showing you the palaces around Piazza Maggiore. Uh, you know, the area around Bologna was populated 5,000 years ago, but actually it started to settle in 800 after Christ. And in the Middle Age, Bologna was one of the richest and most populated town in, uh, in, in Italy. And uh, as I was saying before about the university, the university is a, a very old institution here that dates back to 1088 and uh, is the, uh, the oldest uh, uh, university in the Western world. The Western, the Western civilization. Now, the other highlights of this antique town is its roof arcade system that spreads all around the cent from the center to the outskirts outside of the city for a total of roughly 53 kilometers. And it's very interesting, these rooftop arcade coverage passageways, in the sense that they protect the, you know, people walking around, they're able to avoid the rain by going into the unit. And they have been considered a heritage uh, for the UNESCO heritage program in the sense of their historical and cultural context. Uh, the arcades uh, in, were from the year 1288, it was made mandatory that if you were to build a new palace, a new building, you were forced to have an arcade 
portable system incorporated into it. So it, now it is uh, extends in a, a net of 53 kilometers all around the city that is uh, mainly around the center, but it goes also toward the outskirts of the, of the city. And another um, highlights of Bologna that you cannot see from the square, but is walking distance, everything is walking distance in uh, Bologna, are the towers, the two towers, the leaning towers. Uh, you know, Italy is full of <laughs> leaning towers. <laughs> and these two were leaning from the very beginning, but they've been there for 100, uh, 800 years and they're still there. So um, there's, no, we don't have to be scared about it. And the first one is uh, Torre degli Asinelli, that is almost 100 meters high. Now, when you say leaning, is it like the, to the pizza, the, the Tower of Pizza? No. Not pizza, Pisa. Pisa, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> or is it slightly leaning? <laughs> it's. it's <laughs> Enough leaning. <laughs> it's quite leaning. It, enough to think that it's a miracle that it's still there. But um, these two towers, as I was saying, La Torre di Asinelli and uh, Garizenda Tower, that is lower, um, get their names from the noble family that provide the construction of the, of the two towers. And in the Middle Age, there were uh, around 100 towers in Bologna, of which we have 17 left. left. Okay. And the reason why there were so many towers was that the, the noble family were building them for two purposes. One was a defense purpose, obviously, and the other one was to show the power of the, of the family. The higher the tower, the more powerful the, the, family. the status of the family. Let's switch over now and start showing you the well, you belly see, of the city. Yeah. Okay. Now, okay, so basically. I, I hold the stick. In the, the year 1200, the municipality of Bologna expropriated several houses and churches in order to create today's Piazza Maggiore. This laying the foundation of the first compound of palaces specifically built for public administration functions. In right in front of us, we see the Palazzo del Banchi, which name comes from the ancient times when there used to be the money changers exchange system, counter system, they used to exchange money in the piazza. This is the building most recently erected in the square and it is actually a spectacular facade designed to hide the narrow streets behind the market. It has 15 arches, the ones we were mentioning about before, of which two access to the narrow streets. Here are the two ones, the big one that goes, actually they cut, you know, and they go to the small streets behind. Okay, designed by Jacobo Barozzi called El Mignola, it dates back to the second half of the 16th century. Okay, now we move a little bit to the right uh, to the right clockwise and we get to the basilica di san petronio which is the largest church in bologna and the most representative due to its dominant position and is its proportion this church is dedicated to the patron saint and it's among the five largest churches in italy the construction uh, began in the late 14th century and lasted for a very long time. As you can see, it's not finished yet. You know, the facade uh, is remained uh, unfinished. The lower part is covered with marble, pink and white marble, and the upper part is still in bricks. So the, the project uh, passed through a lot of hands and uh, many architects. But the most curious thing about um, this this, uh, this church is that inside we cannot go inside because there is a lot of uh, security, protection and security yeah. and everything so we could go inside but we could not film but there is the worldwide biggest indoor meridian that is that corresponds exactly to the six hundred thousandth proportion of the territorial meridian and inside the church there is also another treasure that is the organ uh, done by Lorenzo da Prato in 1470, which is the oldest organ in the world that is still in use. Okay. Okay, let's take a little break and take advantage. There's, uh, we got some people watching right now, as always, you know, the comments on Facebook come delayed, but I know there's uh, folks watching and giving us some um, love. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, 
We would also like to welcome all the replay viewers, because obviously this will stay on the Facebook page later for us to be able to view. Now, let's follow our tour. We go again clockwise. Okay. On the right, and we show the Palazzo dei Notai that was erected in 1381. And next to the palace of the dei Notai, begins the famous shopping street Via D'Azeglio that has all the expensive stores, stores. Which, which we're staying away from today because the credit card is, is well no maybe later we'll go down there no it's a <laughs> Sunday afternoon so everything is going to be closed it's, it's very good for uh, window shopping <laughs> so this palace has the name you know has the name of a notai because it was built by the notary society who had the need to have a building for, uh, you know, to place their headquarter. In this place has been kept for years all the notarial documents that were drawn by, uh, drawn up in, uh, in uh, Bologna. And in the facade of the building, we are a little bit far away, so you can't really see, but uh, on the facade, you see at the center, uh, the ancient emblem of the corporation of notaries uh, that is composed of three ink wheels with their quills. Okay, now we move a little bit again to on the right. To the right. Clockwise, and we have the Palazzo d'Arcusio, the town hall, which is made up of a set of buildings that over the centuries have gradually been joined to a more ancient portion of the city at the end of the 13th century, including, among other things, the home of Arcursio, a Bolognese called Arcursio. Arcursio. <laughs> Am I pronouncing it? Arcursio. <laughs> a Bolognese scholar and master of law. The palace was originally intended to keep the public granary reserves and to host the municipal offices. In 1336, it became the residence of the elders, the highest judiciary of the city government, and was later the town hall to the year 2008. Today, it is home to the Civic Art Collection. Watch your step. Careful. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> now, we're proceeding clockwise, and we are, have to go behind this covered structure here so we can see the next building inside oh, the square. somebody is saying something here. Where? Oh, Caterina. Hello, Caterina. Ciao, Thanks. Caterina. Ciao, como stai? <laughs> Caterina is, uh, also lives in Italy, and she is a wine expert. And we welcome you to our first pilot series of Casa Chiesi. Hi! Hello! Hello! <laughs> <laughs> no, we like, told you they're nice. <laughs> they're, they're super nice in this town. So let's move along and we go to Palazzo Re Enzo. So it's like we are going uh, on the, how can I say, the right side of the square. Oops. And we are reaching the Palazzo Re, Re Enzo. It's not Re Enzo, which is the name. It's the Re King Enzo. Okay, and here it beautiful is. Beautiful sunshine signing right on the palace. And can you tell us a little bit the story about it? Okay. Oh, the, the palace derives from the name of Enzo of Sardinia. That was the illegitimate... Ill how do you say illegit non legitimo illegitimo? The non no, <laughs> illegit. Ill 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 <laughs> he was not the official son. Okay, he was not the official <laughs> son of Federico II, the Emperor Federico II, who named Enzo, his son, uh, King of Sardinia. He Enzo was uh, Enzo was imprisoned in in this building from 1249 to 1272 which makes a good 23 years but the, it was a very strange kind of jail because the king could get out during the day so but, en he had en to but go enzo back. was in jail in here yeah he was in jail but it was a kind of free jail because he only had to spend time here at night ah, okay. and he was locked inside the cage that was hanging from the ceiling but while he was uh, captured inside this building, he could still see women. And actually, he had uh, in, in his uh, in his will, he, he talks about three sons. But the legend says that he also had a daughter from a peasant called Lucia di Via, Via Dagola, 
and the sun was a beloved sun. In fact, it was called the Ben ti voglio, which means amore mio, bene ti voglio. And this word, my love, I'm fond of you, became, the, became a surname. You have to know that uh, uh, the legend said that this was the ancestor of the Bentivoglio family. There was a family that later on ruled Bologna. Okay, now we cannot go inside. But anyway, on the right hand of the palace, there is the entry to the chapel of Santa Maria dei Carcerati. Uh, there, people sentenced to death used to go and pray right before the execution. Uh, that's very nice. Now, uh, apart from that, uh, can you translate Santa Maria del Carcerati would mean Santa Maria of the jails? Yes, Santa Maria of the, of the jail. jail. Okay. I come on this side. Okay. Okay, now we're going to move along here, and it's a very big pity that this structure that we're seeing covered is the marble and bronze fountain that is under restoration that was built by. Flemish Giambologna. Giambologna. Giambologna, designed by Thomas Lorente between 1563 and 1566. Let's see if you can highlight between the people here the figure the, of. How, you see, they are restoring La Fontana di Nettuno. And there's Neptuno. We can only show you a picture. Yeah, because it's covered totally, it's, just, it's under restoration. It is the symbol of papal power. Inside the, its depiction, Neptune rules the sea, the Pope dominates the world. Placed at the foot of the fountain is a representation of four cherubs that each one would represent a river. One represented the Gangs, the other one represented the, Ni the Nile River, the Amazon, and the Nub. And obviously, that was to show the importance of the Pope and the, and the papal uh, powers around all the continents. Here we can see some imagery. Those are the shows we were talking about. And let's close up and try to go back to the center and give everybody a nice view before It's we start. a real pity you cannot see the, the fountain, but, you know, ancient things need to be <laughs> restored <laughs> sometimes. So we are going back to the center. Now let me get on the other side. Okay, there we go. And we're going to try to switch back over to us. Here we are. Okay. We would like to thank everybody who has joined us on today's live Sunday. I know it's Thank up you. in the States. It's early in the morning. You might be having breakfast and pancakes. <laughs> we're sorry we we're a little bit late, but we had a problem with the other phone. We had a little technical phone, so... problem, but at the moment, we'd like to thank everybody for joining us and greet all the replay uh, viewers for, uh, straight from the belly of Bologna. We say goodbye and look forward to seeing you in our next Casa Chiesi City Belly. And remember, there's a message there. Yeah, there's a message. Steve Haley is sharing the video. Thank you very much, Stephen. Really appreciate the share of the video. Uh, remember to check out casachiesi.com, just like uh, from the page, C -A, uh, the, the Casa Yes. .com. Sign up for the news, subscribe yeah. to the newsletter. So you, you can get the news about the next And uh, give us some feedback regarding our first pilot of Casa Chiesi City Belly. We will be doing more of these from our favorite Italian cities. We would like to know if you managed to have, a, had, have an idea of how the square looks and uh, if it's nice. Ciao from Casa Chiesi. Ciao. Have a great Sunday, everybody. Ciao, ciao.